Okay, so I think when the idea of the gaming phone really went mainstream was when Razer launched the Razer phone, which was basically like, you know, a next bit Robin 2, but in green and black and with the Razer logo at the back. But when I saw that phone, I was like, uh, I mean, it had a nice sort of high refresh rate display and all that, but it didn't really feel like a gaming phone more than a phone with gaming stickers. But since then, a lot of gaming phones have come out. So one of the most notable ones and probably the phone that I really only thought like, okay, whoa, wait a minute, that looks like a gaming phone was the Asus ROG phone. And today, well, they've updated it. Not today, lah, but today I get to check it out. And that phone is called... It's called the ROG Phone 2. So let's unbox it. So if any of you have watched my previous ROG phone unboxing video, you would know that you know the box itself is quite a unique experience and this time it's not that different, you see. This phone doesn't come in a box box. It comes in a triangular box. But things are a little bit different this time. So the last time, right, there was this flap that went It's really cool. This one is a little bit different because they've gone for what I like to call the silo approach. Where you... Could you hear that? My stomach going grow, 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 grow. Okay, the silo approach. So what happens is, you pull the top. <laughs> oh. And then you've got all three sides. All three sides with goodies from the ROG phone too. So let's start on this side, okay? With the nice little crisp ROG text. ROG. Then you have this. If we were to pop it out. Uh, it's another triangle. They're really into triangles. But it opens up this time and you're greeted with this. So this is the... Ooh, it's a nice packet. You're greeted with this, which is like a sort of funky looking case for your smartphone. Then we've got this, which should be... Yep, it's some, it's some paperwork. Again, I'm gonna read that. Uh, in here, what else you got? Ooh, so that's where all the charges are. Oh, look at that beautiful braided cable. Oh, oh and it's USB-C to USB-C. It's beautifully braided. <laughs> you have the power brick, um, which is a fast charging power brick. So from what I can tell, ooh, so this is a 30 watt fast charging power brick. It's not 5v2a, 9v2a, not any of that. This is 30 watts included in the box. Good job Asus, I like this. Inside there's another little compartment. Ooh, so many compartments. Wow, look at that individually sort of wrapped. Wrapped, packeted uh, little components. And uh, yeah, that's about it for this section. If we move on to this section. This is the first and only accessory you get for free with the phone. That is the Aeroactive cooler. So, uh, or at least this is the Aeroactive cooler, I think version 2.0. So it's slightly different from the first one. So uh, it functions pretty much the same though. The idea is you strap it onto your phone, it provides extra cooling and extra RGB. Plus, there's like a headphone jack at the bottom and a pass-through USB-C port for when you need to charge it. Very useful. But we'll put that aside, we'll revisit that later. And then, time for the pierce de resistance. The ROG Phone 2, or as I like to call it, the rock phone. Ah! Is there a protector on the front? <gasps> oh, there's no like layer on the front where you can like do the, you know. 
but oof, that is it. That is the ROG phone in all its glory. I have to say, first impressions, it looks a lot more better <laughs> than the previous one uh, because it's more glass, so you've got all this glass. It looks like uh, more phone, I guess, but without losing sort of the gamer aesthetic with all these angular lines. Uh, this makes it feel a little bit more expensive, a little bit more premium. A little bit less industrial, for those of you who prefer that industrial look, maybe you won't like this, but yeah, I dig it. This looks pretty cool. I don't really like this like super angular camera module though. There are like just too many angles. Uh, I don't know, it's a bit too much for me. <laughs> the flash modules also. <laughs> a bit too much lah, okay? But over on the front, things look pretty much the same. So uh, before we talk about it, let's just boot it up. Okay, right off the bat, the first thing that I'm noticing is that this is a much bigger screen than it was uh, on the original ROG phone and that's because this is now a 6.59 inch panel compared to the like 6 inch panel that you find on the other first generation ROG phone. Um, but resolution is still the same, it's still full HD+. The only difference is that now this screen pushes a refresh rate of up to 120Hz. The previous one only did 90 hertz. So that means this new 120Hz screen puts the ROG phone right on par with the Razer Phone 2 which I think is something that a lot of people were asking for in the first place. But the display isn't the only thing that Asus updated with the ROG Phone 2. They also brought all the specs uh, into 2019. So that means inside you'll find a Snapdragon 855 Plus processor which is basically a speed binned 855 that's now clocked at 2.96 GHz. RAM is now 12 gigs of uh, DDR4 memory and you have a choice of either 512 gigs or 1 terabyte of UFS 3.0 storage. That is a lot of power. That is insane numbers for any smartphone. So you know, Asus is really not messing around here. They're bringing their A game. But I think my favorite thing about this device is the fact that inside it has a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. 6,000! That's bigger than like any flagship I have seen so far. That's insane. Good job, Asus. And the nice thing is that they also did all of that without sacrificing on a lot of the kind of features that we like from the original ROG phone. And that includes the fact that it still has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack at the bottom alongside a USB Type-C port. And then you still have the second USB Type-C port which is like behind this uh, rubber flap. So you've got the second USB-C port there and you know the other sort of almost macam USB-C but it's actually meant for the accessories so you're not supposed to plug a USB-C cable in there. There's a warning on the box that says don't do that. Also making a return on the ROG Phone 2 is really the special feature that made this gaming phone sort of stand out from the other gaming phones and that is the air trigger. So on top of the, on the right side I should say, of the ROG Phone 2, there are two touch sensitive uh, corners that you can actually use to sort of simulate uh, shoulder buttons on like a controller. So the cool thing about this is that the software for this actually lets you remap the function of uh, where these things touch to anywhere on the screen. So let's say you you're in a game, right, and you have controls that you want to touch with the shoulder buttons rather than your thumbs. You can actually set it so that the air triggers will touch that particular part of the screen and enable whatever action that you need it to. This is really cool because it doesn't require a lot of development from the game developer and you can actually just apply it to any sort of game function that you could think of. Asus has also improved them so that they're more sensitive and there's like a sliding function to it uh, which we will test out in a bit. But my original problem with the air triggers was that they were a little bit hard to detect so let's see if they've made any improvements there. It really feels better. Like it's a lot more responsive now. I remember needing to press like pretty hard last time just to get the buttons to register. But now it's like, oh, it's not bad. Oh. oh my gosh. Okay, okay, so my favorite thing now is the speakers. Oh, they sound so good, what the heck? Like forget, uh, you can forget all about earpiece 
stereo combo things, this nothing just nothing beats proper stereo speakers. Proper front facing stereo speakers. And I believe they've also up Asus has also upgraded these so now they support uh, DTSX. Oh yeah they sound really good. And you get these awesome speakers plus a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Like hello? In fact, if I were to crank it, and this is not even oh. Okay, yeah. So no surprise there. The gaming phone felt really good when you're gaming. Um, I didn't feel any sort of lag or slowdown uh, during my brief gaming period, but I guess it would take more to really like overheat. The phone does feel a bit warm though, um, which is. I don't know, some might find that worrying, but I usually am okay with the phone feeling warm as long as I don't notice any drop frames, and there really weren't any drop frames. I think the really cool thing about the air triggers is that not only can you remap it to touch anywhere on the screen, but it also saves profiles for each individual game. So like for example, in the first game that I played, you know, it was mapped to this specific part of the screen, but when I switched the game, I didn't need to remap it again, which is something I really appreciate. But yeah, the speakers, uh, for now, they're definitely my favorite part about gaming on this smartphone because they sound really good, uh, they're really loud, and they don't really have sort of like that crunchy sort of crackling sound that you might get from like a phone that's been artificially boosted just to get a lot of volume. These sound pretty decent, uh, but then again, you know, I'm not an audiophile, so some of you may disagree. They're good enough for me though, and I love that you can also get these awesome speakers plus a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So for those who are all about that bezel-less, you know those bezel-less purist people like uh, Nick over there, they might not like the fact that this actually has a bit of a forehead and a chin, but I think this is good in two ways. Number one, it lets you have these awesome speakers. Number two, it's also like, uh, it helps with palm rejection when you're playing video games because uh, one thing I noticed from like really slim bezel phones is sometimes you might accidentally touch the side of the screen. I didn't really have a problem with this phone. But here's my problem with this uh, display in particular. So yes, it's a 120 hertz screen. So when you're like swiping around, when you're just like, you know, doing sort of app stuff, like it looks really cool, really fluid, really fast. You know, it feels like a high refresh rate display should. But not all mobile games support this 120 hertz refresh rate, so you won't be able to enjoy this when you are playing uh, a lot of games actually. So Asus has published like a list of uh, video games that mobile games that actually support this 120 hertz refresh rate. And from that list, the only real game that I recognize is Vainglory. Uh, I'm not much of a mobile gamer, but you know, let me let me just see. I, I don't know if that's a good game, but let me ask. Uh, Anip! Vainglory good ah? <laughs> you heard it here first. So that means that a lot of mainstream games, uh, or what I consider mainstream games, like uh, Asphalt, PUBG, uh, Mobile Legends, uh, Honka Impact, you know, all these games, they don't actually support the fast 120Hz refresh rate, so you won't get to capitalize on that even though you've got this awesome fast refresh rate screen. And that's a little bit disappointing. So gaming aside, this uh, gaming phone still needs to be a phone. And for it to be a phone, it needs to have a lot of phone features. So uh, one of those is a camera. And the ROG Phone 2 does have a camera. And on paper, it actually looks pretty decent. So it has a 48 megapixel main camera, as well as a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. Okay, so if we do, sort of take a photo. So let's take a photo of Mr. Videographer over here. This is the normal one. This is the ultra wide. Ooh, this this is what I'm looking at. This is you and me. Hi. I I don't know, man. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. It looks okay, but it's not what you'd expect from like a flagship smartphone. So. You know, you should keep that in mind if the camera is also very important for you, even in your gaming smartphone. There's also a 24 megapixel selfie shooter, which I will take a photo of. Give you the, the purse lips. Let's just say that you're not buying this phone for the camera performance. Other smartphone features include a uh, biometric security, so if you may notice that there is no uh, fingerprint scanner at the back of the phone anymore, that's because now it has shifted to an in-display one, which you can see. 
it's pretty fast. Not like groundbreakingly fast or anything like that, but snappy enough. And on top of all the built-in gaming features, you can also get this phone with a whole bunch of gaming accessories, including the new and updated Twin View dock, which is like a dual display sort of Nintendo 3DS style thing. So it's improved now, but it has a slightly smaller 5,000 mAh battery, but it has more better cooling, I guess. I don't actually have it here with me, so I can't show you. Uh, you've also got, of course, the Aeroactive Cooler uh, V2, which I actually haven't stuck in yet. So if we pull this up. Oh, hearts here. Boop. And then clamp it down. Oh! So once it activates, it immediately kicks your phone into like a landscape mode. You can hear the fan now. Can you hear it? You can feel it sort of blowing. Ooh, it's quite nice. I don't know how well it will actually cool the phone, but it does a great job at cooling your fingers. So if you want to control uh, the fan speed and stuff like that, you can do that in the ROG. ROG uh, Armory Crate. You have this, this screen, which is like your... It's sort of like, you know, those gaming profiles. Uh, gaming software, I mean, built into PCs. So you can control stuff like your Game Genie, your air trigger mapping, your fan speed. So I've got it set all the way max. You can also turn it on auto. And system lighting. So here's what I saw that was really cool. Um, lighting synchronization. So what this does is you can apparently sync your ROG phone with all your other friends' ROG phones so that all your RGB lighting, that's that's this thing at the back. Oh wait, it's not on. How do I turn it on? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> which is your RGB uh, light, which uh, there's actually another one also, like here. Let me just unplug it for you. So your RGB light, um, this, you can sync it with all your friends with that lighting sync technology. I mean, that's if all your friends have RG phone things as well. Or you could buy them for your friends. On top of that, one new thing that I noticed is with the new cooler is that now there's Republic of Gamers in RGB in the front. So you know that it's an RG phone. So yeah, those are pretty much all of the upgrades that Asus made to the ROG Phone 2 and I think a lot of them are pretty good. You've got a faster refresh rate screen, you've got a bigger screen, you've got nicer sonic speakers, more power obviously, more storage, you know, the whole nine yards. It's a proper sort of sequel to what was already a pretty interesting smartphone and yeah, they've basically made it more interesting. It's a, more of a refinement than like a whole sort of game-changing new device. But, you know, it seems pretty decent. For now though, we don't know how much this smartphone will cost when it comes to Malaysia, but it's definitely coming to Malaysia. The launch date is set on the 16th of October and we will definitely be there to give you all the latest coverage. Um, but local retailer DirectD has already sort of teased the price. Uh, so apparently the base model with 512 gigs of storage, yes, that's the base model, will be priced at 3XXX, which my guess is 3,999 gigs, so 3999. I think that's a pretty reasonable price. Um, and then from there, you have the top spec variant with one terabyte of internal storage that is 4XXX. Um, so generally, when you jump from storage variant to storage variant, you're usually seeing about five to 700 ringgit of a price gap. So maybe the top spec version will be priced at maybe 4499 or 4699, somewhere between that range, I think would be reasonable. But yeah, I don't know exactly how much it's priced at. Right? This is just my guess. Um, still, if we're looking at that price, uh, do you think it's a reasonable buy? Let me know in the comments below. Would you personally pick up this gaming smartphone? Or would you go for something else, something like the Black Shark 2 or even the Razer Phone 2? Let me know in the comments below. But that is it for this unboxing of the ROG Phone 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of our future updates. You can also like us on Facebook and keep your browser locked to searchinshow.com for all that matters. <laughs> In the meantime, if you want to check out another really cool video like uh, Alexa's hands-on of the ROG Phone 2, you can check that out over here. Or if you want to see sort of a more radical phone that uh, is not a gaming phone, like the Galaxy Fold, you can check that out over here. That's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!